What's up guys and welcome back to another real world, it's snowy as hell outside, unfiltered buddy review. I'm here with my buddy Nathan. Hey guys. And a goose over there flying by. And behind us is the 2019 Volvo V60. And I'm very excited Nathan because, well it should be known, I'm kind of a Volvo fan. But I'm going to try and be as fair as possible. In this video we're going to do of course our real world 0-60 to with three people in the car. Uh, we're going to do our sound test, our ride quality test. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to give it a rating of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. But we need to get started by telling them what's under the hood. Can you go open the hood and I'll, uh, I'll talk about it a little bit? Nathan's Swedish is impeccable. If I mix that with a little bit of Chinese, it's about accurate for this car, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Yep. So this car is available with two different engines. There's the T5 and the T6. The T5 is a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder, uh, but this one is the T6. And once Nathan opens the hood, there we go. I can explain what that means. So, the, in Swedish, sorry. It, of course, yeah. The T6 is a two-liter four-cylinder, just like the T5. It's also turbocharged, but the T6 is also supercharged. On top of that, it's called twin charged, and it makes 316 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, and it sends that power to all four wheels. This one is all-wheel drive through an automatic transmission. There you go. Boom. Quickly, a little bit about styling. I got to go on the press launch for this car, and I was talking with the designer, and I learned that the styling for the wagon here was actually based off of a car called the P1800ES. And if you don't know what that is, well, I'll put a picture right here for a second, or you could just Google it, whatever you want to do. But this one line, come back here. This little line, it picks up right here, and it just goes all the way to the back. That is the one character line that was like the one they took from the P1800. I think it's really cool. Really quickly, open this, because I think this trunk opens super fast for an automatic opening trunk. Look at that. That's well, the car itself is a super fast car, so it has to have a super fast trunk. Right. I mean, just look at the speed of this thing. By the way, the P1800D is one of my favorite cars. Like, Gorgeous ever. car. Gorgeous yeah, car. Yeah, and this is a really good looking car. The one thing about it, by, guys, the engine, the way it works, when we're in the car, you're going to see this, mm -hmm. no lag. No lag. It yeah. freaking goes. It's and amazing. I'm excited for that, and I want to get in the car. Yeah, let's get inside because it is really cold. Should it's we get really in the back cool. real quick? Yeah, get in the back real okay. fast. Okay. Well, the, the rear seat is... Actually pretty spacious. It's I pretty think. good. I've got about an inch worth of space sitting behind myself. Yeah, same. I'm doing all right here. But bear in mind, this is not the largest wagon they produce. No, the V90 is a lot bigger. Uh, I also have plenty of headroom despite having this enormous panoramic sunroof. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, it's, it is pretty good. All right, should we hop in the front yes. and go for a drive? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It'll put stuck. Volvo safety right here. Volvo safety. You're not getting out of my car. No, oh, not open the door for him, would you? We got child locks. So in the, the child Volvo. safety locks, by the way, guys, is actuated by the driver. <laughs> so the last person who drove this was Roman. In other words, he wanted to make sure no children were getting out of the car without his say-so. So they're not on the door, they're actually in the door over there where Mike is about to sit. Uh, I can undo the child locks. <laughs> okay. I've been getting smarter about this, Nathan. I pre-started our zero to 60 timer. Yeah, that's a good idea. It takes a second to kick in. It's got to get all the satellites lined up. Exactly. So like a lot of new Volvos these days, it's not a push button, it's like a twist button to start. Uh, this one has a lovely touchscreen infotainment system and a digital cockpit, which I think is super cool. Really quickly about the interior, if you look next to you, Matt, this interior is called City Weave. And it's a mix of cloth and, well, they call it blonde leather. Tweed? It's not tweed, it's, it's tweed. city weave. It's tweed. And it's meant for the youth. That's what they said city on the weaving tip. means tweed in Swedish. Sure, yeah. That's drive. And so, then, yeah, you want to help with the uh, windshield wipers? The wipers. Because it is very snowy today. <laughs> yeah. Guys, you're getting us with this. This is actually more of an eastern snow for us. It's not the it's light flaky stuff yeah, we're used to. it's very wet, isn't it? Yeah, it's very wet and heavy. We're not happy. Not super thrilled, but that's okay. It's perfect for this car, though. It is actually very good for this car. Uh, while we're in here, before we get on the highway, I did want to say, I, this is one of my favorite infotainment systems 
on the market right now. Well, they just sped it up. It's actually a, a improved one this year. So you can swipe right to access a bunch of different settings. You can also swipe left to access some more car focus settings. Uh, this one has a lot of different options, Nathan. So the, the wagon, the V60, starts at about $38,000. That's the, the front wheel drive turbocharged with, with one. the less powerful engine. Right, right, right. Then you can step up to the all wheel drive with the slightly more powerful engine, and that starts at about $43,000. But this one has been optioned to smithereens, and I think the price we're looking at for, for this is about $54,000. Well, that, that's that a is, lot of money. That is a lot of dough, but when you compare it next to vehicles from Germany and from Japan, mm -hmm. it's not that expensive. It's not that bad. It's no. very luxurious in here. Yes, it is. And I'm suspecting that the performance we're going to see is actually going to be really impressive. I would imagine so, and it's going to be on a slippery surface. So real world conditions, two large guys, one medium guy, and um, we'll put yeah. it in dynamic mode for high performance. All right, we're going to about to go the high performance. Complete stop. Let that reset. Brake torque. Wow, the thing has a kick. It picks up, yeah. It's a little quicker than the Suzuki Samurai you and I just checked. Oh, no, no, no. And there we are, 7.46 seconds. That's a slight uphill that is in a very wet and sticky, snowy situation with two, three people. I am impressed with that result, actually. That's a But really I'm not good surprised. Result. This thing is, I mean, the, the, that turbocharged, supercharged engine. The really cool thing is, what happens with the engine, okay, normally with, especially with Swedish cars, uh, old turbocharged Swedish cars, when you push your foot down, it'd take a second, then it would spool up, then right. it would go. The, the now, supercharger negates right, all of that. What happens is the supercharger kicks in first and it brings you up, and then it actually disconnects mechanically, and the turbocharger kicks in. And because of that, it absolutely mitigates pretty much all power loss and all, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm it sorry. works really well. No, yeah, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's really good. We have to do our sound test, yeah, yeah. so 60 miles an hour on the highway. So we're sitting right around 60 decibels. Which is pretty good considering the fact that we're sloshing through water right sloshing now. Sloshing through water, snow, it's very quiet in here, very comfortable too. There is a little bit of a rumble though I am hearing from up here and that's, that's kind of typical. Some kind of like some turbulence, some yeah. noise maybe. We're um, definitely hearing it outside the range of the mic. One of the cool things about this twin charge motor, not only can you do zero to 60 in a very a quick pace, right? Right. It's also supposed to get about 31 mpg on the highway, which, pretty which is a pretty good number. For, for an all-wheel drive car, that's excellent. I think it weighs a little over 4,000 pounds. So for something that's that heavy, uh, th that has that much power, 31 mpg is pretty impressive. And that's thanks to having a two liter engine at the end of the day, right? Okay, you know what else is good at the end of the day? A, a sandwich. Big fat sandwich. <laughs> let's, big sandwich. Let's do our snarf test. Snarf test. test. Find snarfs. Try it again, I'll do it. Searching for POI in Colorado. Well? Select a POI in the list. I um, see the list. Yeah, I don't see a list there. Where's the list? What'd you do? I'm confused. You broke scared. it. Did I break it? Yeah. Say line number or say off. There's no Done. line. Not this is a new one. Or isn't POI it? along the route. Wait, on the map. Cancel. I, I'm going to call this a not pass. Okay, okay, now you're just making fingerprints. No, I'm, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> That's me uh, helping. Oh gosh, cancel! Cancel, cancel sweetie. Cancel! Cancel! Oh, this... Did that cancel it? That cancel it? Yeah, I said goodbye. Okay, we're done. Chinese. Okay, right, that'll do it, yeah. <laughs> okay, before we get to the bumpy section of the road here... Where uh, we use the hula girl to measure it. We have our hula test, scale of 1 to 10. 10 is she's dancing a lot and it's a bumpy ride. Uh, one is she's not dancing at all, and it's a very smooth ride. A high score is bad. Uh, so let's see what this does. Oh, we gotta put it in comfort mode. Will that affect the suspension? It does. This have, has adaptive suspension. Okay. Uh, and instantly I felt a difference right there from okay. dynamic to, to comfort. Well, you've driven these cars more than I have. Actually, this is my first ride in the wagon. I've driven the sedan. Right. Which is basically just the same thing. Very but, similar. Yeah. yeah. But I, I actually prefer the wagon. I'm so happy the building wagon. She's, she's dancing a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. not, it's not crazy though. Mm -hmm. I'm so, giving her a five. I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go even lower. I'm gonna go four. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very smooth ride, very comfortable. Uh, stop that over there. I'm just saying the ride is great. It's the ride really is really comfortable. good. It's very sporty, and but at the same time, even in comfort mode. I'd yeah. say when halfway up the, the ladder, and uh, yeah, she I was think dancing quite a bit. Pretty, pretty close. She's she's got some moves going on there. Mm -hmm. Indeed, she does. But 
The interior quality of this car is outstanding. Oh, man. Dandy. It's fantastic. And I've seen the trim with wood. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with stitching, too, like uh, with leather and stuff. Yep. So this is one of the many options, and I love the fact that they give you options. Thank you, Volvo, so much for not adding carbon fiber to the interior as a decorating item. Yeah, Vol Volvo's interiors so tactful, right now. So beautiful. It, they're just a top class interiors. I mean, truly. The, this steering wheel, they were the ones who really, made, by the way, brought these in there, the, oh, yeah. the two tone steering wheel. It's I gorgeous. love it. It's really the leather and quality is. It's a good is, quality to it. It's amazing. Uh, it's also heated, which is nice because well, it's most are. 35 degrees. This, the Suzuki Samurai is heated. What? Yeah, if you no, take a lighter and hold it to the bottom of oh, it, the whole then steering it's wheel heats up. Right. Um, the point is, with this car, right off the bat, and I agree with Mike, Volvo, first of all, is a fantastic car company. They have been kicking ass for years they now. Really have. They've made such a comeback, and their vehicles are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They drive great. Yep. In terms of what they compete against, they are affordable, yep. and they're economical. So really, top, top marks to them. The only thing I wish, Mike, yep. If they gave us a manual option, which that would be really sweet. They don't have on any of their cars now. Fortunately, they do still give us a real shift knob, which a lot of people aren't. Yeah, doing. instead of a rotary dial or a yeah, push button. Yeah, yeah, I, I do this appreciate is nice. that. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, I wanted to mention this one has the heads-up display as well. So I'm looking at my speed through the windshield right now, uh, and it's not one of those little screens that's slapped on there. No, this one is the proper. It's, yeah, it's, it's projector. A good, yeah, I forget what the technical term is. I can Heads up that. display, HUD is fine. There's two versions though, but it, it yeah. doesn't matter too much. Uh, but the, the driving experience is just super comfortable, super quiet. And I think there's plenty of space in here too. We're two big guys. We both have headroom, uh, plenty of legroom, plenty of the shoulder room. The seats are room. extremely comfortable. Uh, and I, one thing I do know is that the passenger seat has nearly as many um, options as the driver's seat in terms of movement. It does, yeah. There, there's a, quite a range Not of Not many vehicles do that, including luxury. True. Not many do. True. So that gives me, you know, I, I like that. I wish there were a few more adjustments, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. But that's just in terms of competing against Lexus and, and uh, Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Um, this one does not have the top of the line stereo. There is one level there's above, one this. above this. Yeah, this is Harman Kardon. So there's a few trim levels available on the V60, and this is the Momentum trim, which is actually the base trim. Really? Uh, so you can go up from here to the R design, and then there's the inscription. So it's entirely possible we could tack on several thousand more dollars. You could the... you could add quite a bit to the price. So we're sitting at around fifty four right now. But with this setup, I mean, why would you even want to go further? This I, thing's awesome. I would ditch maybe like the sunroof. I might get rid of well, the heads up just display. You're not cool, but I don't I... know if I need that. I, the point is, I think you could make this even cheaper and still have a really awesome package. The powertrain alone is worth the price of entry. Yeah, fantastic. I, I would train. definitely go for the T six with the all wheel drive and the twin charge motor. I think. Uh, I drove the T5 as well. It's right. totally a great power plant at the same time, but but it's this one's the one you want, I think. It's a little faster, actually a fair amount faster. Yeah. Um, if you want a better gas mileage, you'd have to go for the The thing T5. is with the T6, with this powertrain, you have to get all-wheel drive. It's standard. True. Yes. Yep. That is factual. So there's a lot about this car that I really like. I'm trying to think of things I don't like, and there are there's, very few there's things. There's not much I don't like. Look, there's like Swedish flags on the seats yeah, right here. That's there's something a I could Swedish do with flag. That. I, but there's just all these fun little design cues uh, and it's a wagon like you said who sells a wagon here BMW just pulled the 3 Series wagon yeah I know that's a, which is a total bummer but it is a know, bummer but but we've shown recently on TFL car and TFL now that uh, wagon sales in 2018 actually picked up a they're bit. picking up the trend is is looking up for which wagons. Got, and you know what the bottom line is dude wagons are so much better than crossovers you lower to the ground you get better performance they're better looking they get a lower they have a lower drag coefficient mm -hmm. so they're more dynamic and you still have tons of space and that. you're cool when you drive a wagon and you're cool when you drive a wagon. mommy wagons are so gone because mommy wagons are now SUVs and crossovers true right yeah. this is so this is cool this is cool and if you get the R design that's kind of the sporty that's trim. cooler one. You get all the sporty looks. Uh, I would go for the R design trim. Myself. When are we gonna get the Polestar? Uh, well, hopefully Ooh. soon. <laughs> uh, all right, let's hop out and give it a rating. Uh, yeah, buy at least. I think that's gonna, gonna be a pretty easy one. I think I know. Mike, I know you, you're not married. Uh, as I'm far not. As I know. I'm not. At no. least not in this country. No. Um, maybe in Mexico. I can tell you one thing right off the bat. What's that? If I brought this home. My wife would try to steal the keys. 
She totally would because it's everything she wants. It's great. It's a great car. Yeah, it kicks ass, and uh, I'm just you know the normal buyer at least who rents it. Uh, buy it. Just buy it. Freaking buy it. Buy it. Jeez. Uh, you could also I do like the. the color. Um, I know you don't like the color. I like the color too. But yeah, way. this color is a little. It's kind of champagne-y for me. I think it's I would go your glasses for something. Haven't been adjusted recently, but I think it's darker. Pretty good. Uh, great car, great power, great gas mileage, and actually, I think a pretty good value. Considering uh, what it goes up against, hell yeah. For sure. Yeah, so guys, yeah, uh, thanks for joining us in the snowy weather. We hope uh, you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, this is the real world in real world buddy reviews. For the Fastlane Car, Mike Curtis. Nathan Adlin. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. You're yearin'.